In my last video, I talked about three films that always make me cry, so I figured I would change it up quite a bit this time and talk about three films that always make me laugh. And let me say right off the bat that I'm a total comedy nerd. I mean, growing up, I used to listen to comedy albums all the time. I even listen to albums of comedy radio shows. I read about comedy. I mean, here's a few books right here that I've read about comedy. I um, have four books on my Kindle right now that are all comedy related. And I even uh, hear some of the great legends. We have W.C. Fields, Earl and Hardy, and the Marx Brothers, um, then more modern Monty Python and SCTV, all comedy gods to me. But, uh, you know, choosing you know, favorite comedies is, is pretty tricky. And I thought about which film did I see in a theater that had the biggest laughs. And I th think it was Blazing Saddles, the Mel Brooks film, where people were just uh, in hysterics during that film. Um, I don't know if that film could be made today because of some of the uh, things they say in it. And uh, I also think that film is um, really a kind of jokey, meaning it relies a lot on jokes and sight gags, like films like um, Airplane or Naked Gun. And there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy those fine. But I don't know if they're really up to repeated viewing. So I thought about comedies that are more character driven that I wanted to use for this episode that I could watch over and over again. And so that's what I did. Now, I also wanna say that I could have chosen almost any film by some comedy legends I love, like Albert Brooks, for example. But I think I'll save him for a separate episode all his own. Anyways, this is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. This is the closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today I wanna to talk about three comedies that always make me laugh. One from the 70s, one from the 90s, and one from the 2000s. I'm going to start with um, a film from 1972 that uh, unfortunately is a little bit difficult to find. I have a DVD of it, it's going for about 65 bucks and up now. I haven't seen it listed on any streaming services, but it's um, The Heartbreak Kid. And this is directed by uh, Elaine May, um, who, you know, her background is in the theater. She was a comedy, uh, she was in a comedy team with Mike Nichols, who went on to become such a great director. And um, the screenplay is by Neil Simon. It's based on a short story by Bruce J. Friedman called The Change of Heart. Now this one stars Charles Grodin and a, and a great uh, comic performance. Uh, Jeannie Berlin, who plays his wife, and she is Elaine May's daughter. Sybil Shepard, who was the ingenue of the moment at that time. And Eddie Albert, who plays Sybil Shepard's uh, father. Now, uh, Jeannie Berlin and Eddie Albert both nominated for Best Supporting Actor and Actress. So, uh, Charles Grodin also is... Uh, was the one, very close to becoming the uh, main actor in uh, The Graduate, which was about three years earlier. But of course, Dustin Hoffman got that role. So uh, The Heartbreak Kid is about um, Lenny and Lila, and they uh, have kind of a, a quick romance. They meet in a bar and uh, they get married before consummating their marriage. And uh, they go on a honeymoon to Miami Beach. And uh, after their first night, when their marriage is consummated, you sort of see a um, look of disappointment on Lenny's face. And then a lot of Lila's uh, uh, habits and idiosyncrasies start to annoy him. And it doesn't help when she keeps looking at other uh, couples that are way into their senior years. And Lila will say to Lenny, that's us, Lenny, in another 50 or 60 years. And you can see this wearing down on this guy. So it's, it's a dark comedy. She gets sunburn right away at the beach, even though Lenny told her to uh, put some suntan lotion on. She said, no, she doesn't need to. So she's stuck in her room for three days. He goes down to the beach. There's a lot of room on the beach, and he's laying on a towel on the sand. 
and he hears this voice from a woman, you're in my spot. And he looks up and he says, what? And through the sun, he sees this beautiful blonde, Sybil Shepherd, saying, you're in my spot. So it's very flirtatious. And he becomes obsessed with Sybil Shepherd. And he decides, this is the girl that I want. Now, she's also from an opposite world of his. She's, you know, the waspy Shiksa goddess, if you know what that means. And he wants into this world and he becomes infatuated with her. Now remember, he's on his honeymoon with Lila. So he sort of has to make excuses to be able to see Sybil Shepherd while he, Lila's staying in the room suffering from the sunburns. And uh, there's a couple of great set pieces in this film where, um, for example, Lenny breaks the news to Lila during a dinner that he wants out of the marriage. This is during their honeymoon. And there's another great set piece where he, uh, Lenny goes to uh, Sybil Shepherd's uh, house with her family and tries to convince her father, the very waspy Eddie Albert, that he's in love with his daughter. And Eddie Albert even uh, offers to give him an amount of money because he's very wealthy, but he doesn't want the money. He wants this girl. So it's very character driven. It's kind of dark, it's kind of cringy, but uh, it also has some very poignant moments in it. There was a remake in 2007 with Ben Stiller, who I really like a lot, but the remake did not work. Um, I would put The Heartbreak Kid in one of my top 10 films, most likely, even though it's not very cinematic, but it's just so funny and so interesting uh, that uh, I put it up there and I could watch it any old time. Now, Elaine May also made a film called A New Leaf, which she wrote and stars in and directed. And she stars with Walter Matthau. That's another good one. That's available. That's a good one to check out. And she also was in a series on Amazon Prime with Woody Allen called uh, Crisis in Six Scenes. And that's worth checking out also. It's about six episodes. So that's my first pick for comedies that always make me laugh, The Heartbreak Kid. My second pick for films that always make me laugh is from 1999. You can see this one on Amazon Prime right now. It's uh, Election, and it's directed by uh, Alexander Payne, who also co-wrote the screenplay. Um, and it, he went on to make uh, some really great films, such as Sideways and um, About Schmidt and Nebraska. Uh, before this film, he made a really great one called Citizen Ruth with Laura Dern, who is just fantastic in it. Um, it's based on the novel by Tom Parada. In fact, the novel wasn't even published yet. And like the novel, this film is told from a four different points of view. So you have four different voiceovers from four different characters. It makes it really interesting. This is starring uh, Matthew Broderick who plays a teacher, so it's about 13 years after Ferris Bueller, now he's a high school teacher, and it stars Reese Witherspoon, who uh, I think gives her best performance in this film. And uh, it's about a, um, Reese Witherspoon plays uh, this girl named Tracy Flick, and she is running for student, govern student uh, government uh, president, and Matthew Broderick is the sponsor and a social studies teacher. Well, uh, he doesn't really care for her too much. He's a real overachiever, real in your face, and other things happen uh, that bother him. I won't get into it to ruin any kind of surprises. And he decides to uh, get another candidate, a very popular athlete, to uh, run against her. And so really what this is, is a political satire disguised as a high school comedy. In fact, President Obama said it was one of his most favorite uh, political films. Uh, Tracy Flick, the Reese Witherspoon character, is really become like a iconic, like shorthand for that overachieving kind of obnoxious student. And in fact, Hillary Clinton has said uh, one time, she said that why do people keep coming up to me and asking me if I know who Tracy Flick is? 
So like The Heartbreak Kid, it's a dark comedy. It's a little cringy. It's got some awkward moments. It's character driven as well. Um, it's cringy, especially if you're a teacher. So I'm warning teachers out there, um, be aware of that. Um, I watched it recently again with my son and I mentioned him before, he's 22, just to get his take on it. And his friend who was also 22 and they both really liked it. And uh, he gave it eight and a half out of 10 stars. So great comedy election from 1999. Okay, so now let's get into my uh, third and final pick. And you know, some people might think that uh, I'm some sort of a smart guy because I use big words like uh, solipsistic and panoply and erudite and I wear glasses and I even subscribe to the New Yorker. In fact, I even read most of the New Yorker, but I like a raunchy comedy just as much as the next person. And to go from the sublime to the ridiculous from the last two choices, I'm going to go with my third choice for comedy that always makes me laugh, and that's from 2004, and it's Team America World Police. And you can see this on Showtime right now if you have a Showtime sub subscription. This is directed by Trey Parker, written by him and Matt Stone. Now these are the two guys who are behind South Park and the Book of Mormon. So, and I'm a big fan of both of those. So, if you're familiar with those, you know what you're in for here. The cast is puppets slash marionettes. Um, it's about a, uh, a government uh, effort to infiltrate a Middle Eastern terrorist organization. So they recruit this guy, Gary, from uh, the theater, and he's an actor, and he's a, and they want him to go undercover portraying a terrorist to uh, infiltrate this terrorist group. Um, expect a lot of crude humor. Uh, expect a lot of politically incorrect humor. It's an equally offensive film toward race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, so uh, religion, and it's also very satirical about action films, um, disaster films, and uh, American uh, uh, exceptionalism and American extremes. So if you can deal with all that, you can deal with Team America World Police. Um, put it this way, uh, from what I've read in the audience where this was playing, half the audience would uh, walk out while the other half was on the floor just laughing hysterically. So it's kind of divisive. It was also very controversial because as you can see, this one says uncensored and unrated because uh, people wanted to uh, give it a, a, a NC-17 because there are marionettes uh, having intercourse in there. So believe it or not, yeah. And that scene is hilarious. So know what you're in for if you're getting uh, this film. I didn't see it in the theater because I thought, I'm not gonna go to a theater and watch uh, a film about marionettes. So I had low expectations and then finally I think I rented it or I bought it or something and just hilarious film. So those are my three picks for films that always make me laugh. And I'm sure you guys have your own picks, so feel free to leave a comment. What makes you laugh all the time? Um, feel free to leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.